Hey gang, it's Chris, and here's what I've been thinking about. You ever get the feeling that every movie you go see is pretty much exactly the same? I mean, I don't want to come across as one of those snobs who's like, oh, Hollywood films are garbage and all I ever watch is European movies. But it's a little hard to argue against similarities when Batman, Star Trek, Avengers, and James Bond all have the villain getting caught on purpose as part of their main plot line. So when it starts to feel like these movies were all written by the same person, it's because they kinda were, but more on that in a second. So I recently picked up Robert McKee's book, Story, and have been working my way through it on my commute. If you're not familiar with Robert McKee, well, that's pretty normal, but if you're a writer, you probably should be. McKee is a screenwriting guru who specializes in story structure and character. He's been leading a three-day story structure seminar for Hollywood screenwriters since 1984. If you saw the movie Adaptation, Robert McKee is the basis for the Brian Cox character who chews out Nicolas Cage. That scene is pretty great, by the way, so I'm going to put a link to it right here. I actually remember the first time I ever learned there was such a thing as story structure. I was about 14 years old and I was doing a writing class at my nerd camp through Johns Hopkins University. And I might have had an understanding at that point about uh, like three-act structure, um, certainly not five-act structure. But it was the first time I ever saw that graph where, you know, there's rising tension until the end and a point of climax and then a denouement. And it was the first time that I learned about uh, the first act being, you know, the status quo and the second act being about change and the third act is the new status quo and all that kind of stuff. But I'm 34 now and I've been writing pretty much that whole time and I'm still finding stuff in McKee's book that's just blowing my mind. Now, it's written for screenwriters, but if you're writing fiction or even memoir, nonfiction, I would suggest you check it out. If you're not a writer, but just a reader, um, it might actually be really interesting and help you to uh, sort of further understand and appreciate what you're reading. You know, for instance, when you're reading a book or watching a movie and you just get that feeling that things aren't going anywhere and you feel lost and you're starting to lose interest, uh, this will help you understand why that is. But the reason I bring it up now is because as I was looking for story, I learned about another book called Save the Cat. Save the Cat was published in 2005 by a screenwriter named Blake Snyder, whose credits include Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. But Blake Snyder passed away a couple years ago, so we're not going to make too much fun of him. From what I understand, Save the Cat has become something of a Bible in Hollywood. Um, whereas Robert McKee's story really talks about how there's no such thing as like a single template that you can drop a story into to make it work, Save the Cat basically provides that template. I mean, it's literally a guide to, like, what has to happen on what page to make your story work. Snyder talks about 15 particular beats or events that have to happen in every story for it to be successful. So, for instance, on page one, you have an image that sets the tone for the story and suggests the protagonist's primary problem. You're going to come back to that image with a mirror image that'll be the last thing the audience sees in the film. On page five, there has to be a question or statement, usually made to the protagonist, indicating the story's main thematic idea. Uh, pages one through ten provide an introduction to the main characters. On page twelve, a catalyst or a major event changes the protagonist's world and sets the story in motion. Uh, pages 75 through 85, you have a moment of contemplation in which the hero considers how far he's come and all he's learned. It's the moment in which the hero asks, why is all this happening? Uh, if all that sounds familiar, it's because those are the points that pretty much every Hollywood movie follows in every case. Now, to his credit, in Save the Cat, Blake Snyder outright says that this is intended as a general guide and shouldn't be followed directly. On the other hand, the book has become so popular in Hollywood, there's reportedly screenwriting software that will integrate it and let you know as you're writing if you're meeting those points, like, precisely on the pages you're supposed to hit them. And there are actually some websites that will take uh, movies and break them down and show you where the... Uh, like Save the Cat point for point is. Even a movie like Sweeney Todd, which was based on a musical and therefore has a score and songs that are supposed to take place in a certain order, if you go back and watch the movie, the songs have been cut up and rearranged so that the script can meet those Save the Cat beats just around the proper page. I did download Save the Cat. I haven't started reading it yet. Uh, I think I'll start that after I finish story. And I'm very interested to see the differences in um, style and philosophy between McKee and Snyder. Snyder? Snyder, how about that? I got the name right. Uh, if you're a writer, I'm very interested to hear your thoughts and reaction about story structure. If you've read Robert McKee, if you've read Save the Cat, uh, and how you think that impacts the craft. So until next time, thanks for watching, thanks for thinking, and if you're an action movie villain, remember, it's absolutely essential that you get captured by the hero in order for your plan to work.